Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make any photo into a great looking comic book image complete with cartoon style captions. Because photos do vary in size and characteristics, you may want to assign different numbers to the filters and layer effects for your photo to get the results you want. The size of this document is 800 by 800 pixels and is 72 pixels per inch. The first thing we'll do is make a copy of the original. Press Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac. Go to Filter, Artistic, and Poster Edges. The filter window will open. For the Katy Perry photo, I'm using an edge thickness of 2, an intensity of 1, and posterization 2. We'll go back to the Layers panel and press Ctrl J or Command J on a Mac to make a copy of the posterized layer. We're going to give another filter on this new layer. Go to Filter, Pixelate, Color Halftone. The Color Halftone window will open. We'll give it a maximum radius of 4 pixels and we'll leave the rest in their default settings. We'll change the mode of that layer from Normal to Darken. And now we'll merge the two posterized and pixelated layers together. To do that, press Ctrl E or Command E on a Mac. In order to brighten up the darker areas of Katie's hair, we're going to apply one last filter to her. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Shadows Highlights. In the Shadows Highlights window, I've already assigned the shadows amount to 35%. The higher the percentage, the more hidden detail is brought out from the shadows. The highlights stay the same because the amount is 0%. We'll rename this layer with all the filters FX. We're going to make a border around Katie, so press the FX button and click Stroke. The layer style window will open. Make sure the color is white. Type in 30 pixels for the size and choose the inside for position. We're ready to put Katie's name in now. Press on the New Layer button and go to the Elliptical Marquee tool. We're going to create a background plate for her name. With the Shift key held down, click and drag out. This creates a perfect circular selection. Choose the Gradient tool and go up and click on the Gradient box. The Gradient Editor window will open. I've chosen a linear gradient that goes from deep orange to kind of a yellow orange, but you can choose whatever color works best for your image. I'm choosing a 45 degree angle, so I'm clicking down while I'm holding the shift key and then dragging down at an angle. The shift key confines the gradient to angles of 45, 90, and 180 degrees. Press Ctrl D or Command D on the Mac to get rid of the selection. We'll give this background plate a stroke, so press the FX button and then click on Stroke. The layer style window opens. I'll choose three pixels for this background plate. The position is outside, blend mode normal, and the color is black. We're ready to type Katie's name now, so press on the Type tool and click on the Font dialog box. I've chosen a font called Bada Boom, which you can download at defont.com. For the size, I'll choose 110 points. I'm fast forwarding through this section since I won't be going over typesetting in this tutorial. By the way, one of the last steps we'll be doing is adding a paper texture to the entire image. To choose a color for the name, I'll go to the foreground color and click it. And that'll open the color picker. I'm going to type in E50069, which is a nice hot pink color. If you want to angle your type, press Ctrl T or Command T on a Mac, go to one of the corners, and when you see a curved double arrow, just turn the transform on its axis. If you want to change the position of the transform, just move your cursor somewhere within the transform and move it. To accept it, just press Enter or Return on a Mac. I'm going to add a stroke around the type, so I'm going to go to the Layers panel and click on the FX button and choose Stroke. The Layer Style window will open. I'll click on Color. 
and I'm going to choose the color FFFEED, which is a nice creamy light color. I'm choosing a stroke size of 3 pixels. I'm going to add a drop shadow to the name, but I wanted to include the thickness of the stroke we added. To do this, we need to merge the type and the stroke together. Press the New Layer button, click on the top layer, press Shift, and click on the layer below it. Press Ctrl E or Command E on a Mac, and this will merge the two layers together. We'll now add the drop shadow, so press on the FX button and choose Drop Shadow. The Layer Style window will open that allows us to modify the drop shadow softness, distance, opacity, and blend mode. I'm choosing Linear Burn for this example. We're going to make a thin black border around Katie. Click on the New Layer button. Choose the Rectangular Marquee Tool and drag the rectangle from one corner of her image to the other. Go to Edit and choose Stroke. We'll click on the color and choose Black and we'll keep the stroke width at 3 pixels and make sure the location is inside. As you can see, the thin rectangular line is on top of Katie's name and background plate. We need to place the rectangular line layer underneath them. So we'll click on the layer and drag it beneath Katie's name and background plate. We'll rename the rectangular line border. Notice now her name and background plate are on top. I'm opening up the layers panel so we can see more of the layers at the same time. Click on the new layer button. We're now ready to make this cartoon caption. Choose the rectangular marquee tool and drag a rectangle somewhere near the bottom corner. Don't be concerned about its position yet. We'll move it in a minute. Click on the foreground color and I'm choosing 00A7E5. To fill our rectangle with that color, press Control Delete or Command Delete on a Mac. To get rid of the selection, press Control D or Command D on a Mac. We'll give this background plate a thin border, so press the FX button and choose Stroke. We'll position the stroke inside and we'll make the size 3 pixels. And now I'll move it. I'll press the right arrow three times and the up arrow once. Let's add the caption now. For the font, I'm going to choose Red State Blue State, which you can download for free at blambot.com. I'll press on the color and type in FFD3D3, which is a nice light pink. To save time, I've already typed it in. I'm going to add a stroke to the letters, so I'll click the Effects button and choose Stroke. I want it to be the same color as her name, so I'll click on the color box and go up to any part of her name and click it. I'll choose three pixels for the size and change it from regular to bold italic. Since I set the lines individually, the changes only affect the words I assign it to. So for example, I'll highlight as always and change this to italic. And I'll give this line a two pixel stroke. I'll press the letter V for the move tool and just move the words to a position I like. To give our image a look like it was printed on paper, I'll add the texture from this piece of paper to our image. You can find and download great references of texture for free at cgtextures.com. To add this paper to our Photoshop file, just click somewhere on the paper and drag it up to the Photoshop tab. When you see this file open, drag your mouse or pen down onto the file and release. Go to the Layers panel and change the mode from Normal to Darken. Now our image has a great paper texture to it. Let's add one final finishing touch. When we applied the Pixelate filter to Katie earlier, it got rid of the small highlight reflections in Katie's eyes. So let's put them back in to liven them up. Choose the Elliptical Marquee tool and shift-click near the center of her eye. To fill it with white, 
Press Control Delete or Command Delete on a Mac if white is your background color. If white is your foreground color, press Alt Delete or Option Delete on a Mac. Press Control J or Command J on a Mac to make a copy of it for the other eye. Then with your Move tool, click on one of the layers and drag it to the other eye using the same location. So here is our final Katy Perry comic book style panel. Using the techniques in this tutorial, you can create an entire comic strip using your own photos. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.